How are you liking your Comic-Con so far? It looks like you're having a blast looking at the ears and looking at the costumes and everything. I am. I'm having a blast. Power Rangers Operation Overdrive 10 years later. So a long time ago in a galaxy far far away there was infamous, the infamous Power Rangers Operation Overdrive. It started with a very high debut ratings wise for the Disney era before fizzling out. I enjoyed the show but there were a lot of critics. A lot of people hated the series for some odd reason. Some stuff was bad, acting, directing, having less than 40 episodes etc. Not so much the lack of concentration of this being an anniversary season compared to his Japanese counterpart Google Sentai Bokinger. That was a problem and fans had expectations. Imagine if the baddie had created bad guys out of former Power Rangers Zords, the inspiration for Toei in Japan. However that was a problem. It was a Power Rangers series so people were biased. As I was no as I will note rewatching the series a lot of stuff taken while watching the show without Bokinger makes the show quite enjoyable. Or if it's a masterpiece is well, probably not debatable at all. But I think 10 years later, this show may have been ester underestimated in entertainment, lore, and overall payoff for the show. So you're thinking I'm really biased and was always pro Power Rangers Operation Drive watching the show. Sort of. Well, sort of. My original thoughts. I thought the Android storyline was dumb and out of nowhere. Well, a couple of days ago, I revisited the, revisited the reveal, and it was just sort of dumb. They allowed it in the beginning, with hints that Mac was considered an object, although it was more forced and treated as if they were reading the script, rather than actually showing Andrew treat him as an object, which is a problem, and very nonsensical for the show, and probably why a lot of people didn't like that aspect of the show. He treated him, he treated Mac, Andrew treated Mac like his son, like a human. Both. Spencer and Andrew do hint in the show that, and they don't hint it earlier on for, and there's no reason for this. Well, it's not a plot, it's just very off putting that they only met Mac two years ago. Rewatching this after watching the end of the series finally, I think there is a good payoff for this actually. Although I do suspect the Netflix edit may have been tinkered with to some extent, although not as much as I would like have happened with Mystic Force in my opinion. The series' length is also a problem, which also makes the payoff not as strong, so it does feel a little bit rushed when everybody's dying off. Also the fact that he becomes an android isn't good sci-fi, which I'll get into a bit. When Mac has his speech about finding Moltor in the second to last episode, episode 31. There's not a lot of technical babble as to how Mac sci-fi works, and it's not really that philosophical of what could have been when he goes for the realization that he's an android and that his memories are fake, etc. It doesn't go to a Kokade or Shotaro Ishinomori homage, although there are some aspects of it. It does come off as a little bit children dish and they didn't really believe... It wasn't... I didn't feel like... Mac, the actor for Mac, Jason McLaurin, fully immersed himself in that role. 
and I don't know if it was casting or the poor script, but it didn't come off as genuine or something that audiences could connect with. If they were going to go with that storyline and then that route, then a philosophical, well written script was needed and it wasn't. They did that with RPM and I think that worked really well and I think Operation Overdrive may have even inspired it a bit. Hence the whole Mac Hellman thing. Even that wasn't that philosophical though. In retrospect, even though it is really enjoyable. A lot more enjoyable than how they portrayed it in Operation Overdrive. RPM, was it as Matrix or Inception like? It wasn't like we had to wonder if Max memories were real or not, although that was definitely explored in RPM, which was part of the thing that made it so interesting. And then there was rumors about the plot twist in the end where he wasn't really... Well, we were thinking that he wasn't... They were going to have this plot twist where he wasn't really Dylan and he was Vengeance the whole time or something epic like that prior to Eddie Gazillion being removed from the show. Jedlin taking over overall it wasn't Jedlin's fault. I think Jedlin would like that plot was too good too. But that's another story. There's of course the whole problem about being under the Disney mandate. Supervision from producers. Stockholders etc. The child friendly. Council who believes that you can't write a storyline about that. It definitely could have been. RPM didn't quite go that far itself. And Disney would blame the show on that kind of adult storyline, even though it was mainly because of the 6 a.m. Saturday, Saturday, mind you, for kids storyline, a uh, time slot when there was no school at the time to watch sh TV shows for prior to school. And that's a shame. I definitely think there was some background where they were thinking of this Matrix-like, complicated video game storyline. Let me exp give me a moment to explain that because it's a little bit abstract. But I wonder if you're going to be able to follow what I'm trying to talk about. They use very different locations in the show, which is very Nolan, Wachowski-esque like. In Inception, they go from the bank to the ice mountains to all that. James Bond's stuff and locations from Japan and all those different locations, France, etc. Africa. This is before Inception, by the way, three years prior, but like it definitely was a possibility. Power Rangers go to a television show on the television show, Power Rangers Operation Overdrive, which is very postmodern. Like Inception, like the Wachowski Matrix-esque ideas. There's Wachowski Matrix those fights. The Corona Aurora and Jewels are a very video game matrix MacGuffin type idea to obtain these objects that will save the world. Heck, Master Mao in the next series, Jungle Fury, is from the Matrix, even if it is from a sequel, The Matrix Revolutions. You had a whole cast of characters, much like the Matrix cast. They all do martial arts, they do DNA and reprogramming and learn all these objects and they get special superpowers, etc. Much like the Matrix. I think it would have been a very interesting idea and was possibly explored. However, even if we didn't get that, we did end up with something very good character-wise and plot-wise in the end product. Although many Power Rangers fans, as usual, gave up before giving the storyline a chance, including myself admittedly, I haven't watched the ending till now, and I think it's a really good payoff. Mac wanted his humanity, Moltor gave up his, his stated through dialogue, and I don't know when Moltor had this fact that he used to be a human, but it seemed like a really good anime-ish payoff that I thought was really cool, and 
what was really cool considering that Moltor was this guy who defeated the Power Rangers so many times, made them blow up thanks to the Kalish explosions. And I thought that was a really good payoff for that. It definitely feels like a missing scene, but makes the beef between each other very strong, whether retconned or not, and I really dig that. They're characters that compare and contrast with each other, and it's really cool that they have that moment before the end of the series. I don't remember the last time since the Neo Basan Saban era where that happened. Thurius destroys his brother, the ending Andrew can't give up Mac to Thurius, nor compose of Thurius in the end. Mac doesn't understand why the jewels were given away when he considers himself a robot, something that's somewhat Kikator-ish, which is interesting. Same with the Operation Overdrive Power Rangers. So the element of family is there, ties on his back with his family. Really good payoff for a Disney era plot line. Mystic Force last season didn't have it. And this does. Also, it's a bit darker. Mac is willing to commit suicide because he realizes he's a robot and considers himself replaceable. Andrew doesn't, and they don't really explain why he doesn't, and they don't show it either. But it's cool that he does. He has a little moment where he says, I love you. And Mac takes the effort to take value in his own life. Not to mention Moltor, who I consider the true baddie of the whole series, as I mentioned before, with all the wins and comeuppances he has over the Operation Overdrive Rangers. Or at least does the most. Dies very slowly. So it's not painless death, much like Gan Neros, as I mentioned in a previous review. He then has his body frozen, the worst possible death for a man who lives in a volcanic celestial being, prior to getting exploded by his own brother, all while not sounding tough and very human-like. Gasping for air, gasping for help from his own brother, much like the God Nero's final words, Jurgen Kima told her. The ending is a little bit cheesy, and the whole not being able to die thing, being a shrink of Max, was a very good idea, and then completely getting rid of by the fact that he gets turned into human, which I thought was a weakness, and the payoff of the ending. Why become a human? Feel pain, feel hunger. Although he might have felt that as an android, but that wasn't, wasn't covered when they revealed that. They don't really explore that part at all, which is, again, a piece that probably everybody hated. It's probably a plot hole. Although sci-fi androids can't do those things. But make up your own storyline and physics and physiology and explain how it works. Operation Overdrive. But overall, yeah, very good payoff. I really enjoyed ending of Operation or Drive, and I hope people explore it another time too. That was, that was just a really good payoff to an Operation Overdrive Power Rangers ending, and I don't see that coming anytime soon. Although, we did have that good down charge ending that some people don't like, although I would say Operation Overdrive's ending was a lot better than that, and a lot more fan satisfying. Although, a lot of people didn't like the Android storyline. It does... It was written well, I think, that aspect, and should be explored and enjoyed that way.